What's up, guys? This is the Vinyl Casket. Oh, God. Home to the lamest taste. I am Nick, a guy who can never get the camera straight before the video. There we Is that it? Yeah, home straight. Uh, welcome to the Vinyl Casket. You can check out my YouTube channel at the Vinyl Casket, where I have tons of reviews, reactions, and all sorts of other videos you can check out. Every week, I'm always uploading crazy amount of stuff. I try to put out anywhere between three to four videos a week as I try to. Fix that. Okay. Uh, we will be doing a review on the Trey Paperback graphic novel, collecting all six issues, right, of vinyl from Image Comics. Really, really cool uh, short story here. I'm very excited to talk about this. Before that, we're going to talk about two issues real quick. I finally picked up issue Thor that came out last week, so you'll be hearing about that in this week's review. And I finally got 8 Billion Genies with Jenny Friesen's um, variant cover. I can't think. Uh, I was going to do a comparison between this and some of Boom's uh, trade paperbacks, but... I don't have those on hand at the moment, so we're just going to talk about this, and the next time I do a trade paperback, we'll compare this, because this is a pretty, I feel like for what you're getting, we'll talk about packaging, we'll start We'll start with that. Really like the cardstock for the cover, I think it's the perfect thickness, I do like the gloss, that some areas here are matte finish, and then some areas are gloss, so the vinyl is gloss, uh, the main character is gloss. Everything behind him is matte. Uh, the names of the creators, so uh, Wagner, Hilliard, Stewart, and Dukeshire are all uh, gloss finish on a purple matte streak. Um, you have the same thing going on the spine, which just basically says uh, image, the creators again, and the name of the book. No volume one, so this is a one-shot story. Um, on the back, it does the same thing. The bubbles, the blurbs are uh, gloss finish, and everything else is a matte finish. I think this construction is really cool. I like that it is a thicker um, kind of construction here because of the spine, and like you get a bunch of extras here. So we'll start about that. You have ads for other stuff. You get some character designs in the back, um, early concept art. You get every variant, even the connecting covers, and how they're supposed to be displayed, how they looked when they were printed. Um, I like this. A lot of trade paperbacks, unless you get on the bus and stuff, don't have all these really cool... Here are all the wraparounds, have all these really cool extras in the back. And that's why this book's a little bit thicker. You get some black and white. And yeah, and that's it. Um, six issues. Uh, really awesome story. I like the main characters. Um, I think the creative team here did an amazing. Uh, this is a sub-production, so it's Image Comics and 12-gauge production. Um, basically, this is a whole story involving a... Serial killer that basically has all time, all time, all all timers, all all timers, um, and can only remember his entire past and who he is when mu music is being playing that he knows that he connects to memories and murders. So he plays one every time he murders someone, he plays one song consecutively over and over again through the beginning to the end of the murder. Uh, and then that song is then collected in his mind with that memory. And that's how he battles the Alzheimer's. So he always has a head, head uh, headphone in. So uh, there's a point in the story where he um, spills water all over himself. Um, where his iPod, which he has, which is like an old generation one iPod, gets destroyed, right? And he reverts to this, like, doesn't remember anything, docile, can't make a decision, doesn't really know where he is kind of person, and loses his whole memory. And I thought that was a really interesting 
mechanic like in this character development and this character's personality that he has like this old man who's done all this terrible stuff in his life and has no recollection of it at all and only is able to remember things when familiar songs are played or he listens to um he had a huge collection of vinyl which is what this goes towards um and when he sort of loses memory one of the other main characters uh that he basically raised um that's the, the sense you get gave him the iPod with everything loaded on it. Um, and at the end, so the main story from start to finish, I know I skipped into like the mechanics of his character. Um, basically you have I'm trying to make sure I get the names right. So Walter is the main character. This is Walter. He's a serial killer that has been doing this for years and has all all timers. We start off the story with him meeting with his best friend that he's been talking to for about a year now, who's actually a retired FBI detective who was gone undercover to lure him out and expose him for being the serial killer. You know, he's this happy go lucky guy that just really loves life and whatever. Um, and then it turns out that, uh, this cult of all female sunflower farmers, um, that eat human flesh, uh, have kidnapped the detective's daughter, and he put their son away, like, her only son, because they're all female, whatever, the hate men, and put the son in jail, and when the guy came out, he was all messed up or something, um, and because of that, she blames him, and basically, she forces him to go with her, and... It's exposed that he was like an FBI detective, kind of, um, because Walter grabs the the mic that he dropped and said, hey, to the detective, we got to go do something. So he knew the whole time what was going on and was playing it out, whatever. And it turns out he's like this super genius that then constructs a whole plan to get his best friend, the guy who was trying to arrest him this entire time, out of this weird cult. Uh, and he assembles all these different serial killers and these twins that are just fantasize about horror movies and idolize serial killers and have been trying to be serial killers for years. So they get their first kills. You have this woman that has to wear the skin of other people. Um, and then another guy, this older dude who's working in like sanitation that had been doing this for Walter for years. Um, that just comes out of it as like a strong man. And it was so cool to see this team of killers that he constructed and his big plan until he loses his iPod. And then the plan starts to fall apart. And they have to... There was a present that at the beginning that Walter was about to be given. And then it was taken with the guy because he said he didn't earn it. Right? That present was a record from his last killing. Um, and they were able to play on a record player they had in this auditorium which why they had an auditorium at this sunflower farm, I don't understand. But they were able to play that to bring his memories back. Uh, and then he eventually was able to memorize a tune and have a song stuck in his head. Which The mechanics here of his character development were so cool. His character construction was like something I've never read before in any book, any comic, anything. Obviously, this isn't like a superhero comic. This is like a horror detective kind of thing, but it was super gruesome. Um, it was, artwork with here was incredible. Um, lots of gore. I love the panel structure. Um, and basically at the end, you think he, he's gone, but he actually like is just kind of, uh, roaming around the world, but he loses his, like his best friends and it was, it, it was really suck. I think only the girl becomes a fat, the one girl that gave him the iPod becomes this like fashion, uh, designer. Um, and it was cool. It was, it was a really good story. Uh, definitely room for a sequel. Um, just really awesome. Really colorful. I like how they use black, black, uh, backstop back. There's like, some issues, like some panels are black instead of white behind the panels. I always love that. I think it brings it out so much more. Um, the use of color here, the inking was amazing. Um, 
I love the idea of this cult and this is basically it felt like a horror movie. It felt like a really good horror movie. Uh, and I like how all the, the oh he also wears the ma- whenever he kills someone he goes on a, like goes to fight someone he puts on this mask of a teddy bear missing an eye with an eye hanging off. Um, I thought that was really interesting how like he dons a different persona with the music. It's just like really interesting, well drawn, well planned out. Um, I know I pretty much spoiled the whole thing, but it was just a super cool story. Uh, cannibalism. Um, one of the characters you don't get to see how he was recruited until the end after he's dead. Um, the two FBI agents was really cool to see that how the 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 relationship they developed with each other and with Walter. Um, this is insane. This is probably one of the best series I've ever read. Um, standalone. It's not like a superhero related book. I know, I think something's killing the children. Would be up there, even though it's kind of like still action packed, like superhero related because they're fighting monsters and demons. But what's the other one? Oh, uh, the Me Love in the Dark, also from Image Comics, I believe, which is written by Scotty Young. That's similar in like that series was very different than anything I usually read, and was very impactful and left me very excited. Um, so yeah, that's vinyl, uh, six issues, Image Comic Book, Im- Image Comic Books, uh, Image Comics. Why am I saying comics? Image Comics. Um, this series came out in 2021. This released in 2022. Uh, it should be available at all major comic shops. Uh, Barnes and Noble. I would assume most of these places would carry it. Image is pretty big right now. Any Kenya Cunha, anything like that. Check it out. If you're into horror, if you're into horror movies, if you're into music related stuff, check it out. Really cool. Really gruesome. Highly recommend I would say out of five, I would give it a 4.5. With that being said, this is The Vinyl Casket, home to all the lamest tastes. You can check out my YouTube channel at The Vinyl Casket, where you can subscribe, like, and comment for more reviews, reactions, and weekly comic book videos. Uh, And also check out Manny Reads Comics on YouTube every Tuesday for the weekly roundup. Uh, Do me another favor, and remember to stay lame.